Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. And today we're taking a look at a reprint of a game called Habitats. Now you may not have seen the original game from Quali. I haven't. Um, although the original game of Habitats was interesting because it came with little glass animals. Like the little ones that grandma... What, what do you call those things? They're called... Tchotchkes? No, the, the little ones are the little glass images. They're called something. My grandmother used to collect them. Oh, okay. And we weren't ever allowed to like even breathe on that shelf because they'd fall over and smash. They were in their own glass case, which you also weren't allowed to breathe on or smash. That is correct. Accurate. And that's not, I'm not, that's very it's correct. A china <laughs> cabinet? My parents would keep their like glass stuff in the china cabinet along with the china, but it was like. Don't fancy give people glass china. Anyway, things. they had to come wrapped, and I was always nervous they were going to break. Anyhow. Yeah, they're like wrapped in tissue paper in the box, right? Yes. Now they're, you just drive around a Jeep. So this is very similar to the original game I reviewed, but y'all have never even played that game, so we're just going to take a look at this as if it's a brand new game. So Chris, tell us how to play it. Here's a setup for the game Habitats. Uh, based on player count, you'll be using a different size setup and a different little uh, scoring board here. So we have it set up here for three players. There's a game about building up your own little wildlife preserve. Each player is going to be controlling a Jeep of their color. So for example, we have yellow, red, and the gray player. I wish that there were a better indicator of player colors. This is one of the biggest faults. But we'll be playing as yellow, and there'll be two other players building up their own tile array of habitats. So on a turn, you'll take your Jeep and you can either drive forward, left, or right and collect the tile in that space. And so on my turn, I could come over here, grab this ostrich by turning and driving over there, and then I'll add it somewhere legally to my terrain over here. And then I'll replace it with this uh, tile from this draw bag, place a tile in the area that I just left. The next player will go turn, drive, collect their tile, add it to their habitat, uh, and continue on in this way. Basically, you'll be taking turns until uh, you've played a certain number of turns here. When it comes back to the first player, you finish out, say, for example, nine turns. In a three-player game, you'll do end-of-year scoring based on different objectives here. Uh, you have whoever has built the largest habitat of a single color by grabbing a lot of tiles and adding them out here into a single array touching uh, adjacent area of the most same type of habitats, for example, or for having the most flowers, or for having the longest lines, or having entrances closer to the furthest tiles, different ways to score for majorities over here. So you're gonna play uh, another year. You reset the timer here, take a turn by driving, collecting tiles, and then that would be one turn. And you keep going until seven turns, you'll score year two. Another seven turns, you'll score year three. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. But let me talk to you a little bit about scoring these animals here. Every turn you'll be adding a tile to your display over here, and you're going to be trying to score them. You see that here, for example, the ostrich says that it wants to be connected to a yellow background habitat and two red habitats. You can, you can make that either two that are directly touching the ostrich or a size two habitat that is touching the ostrich. The ostrich itself does not count. So if when driving my van here, my Jeep, I pick up, for example, the Nile alligator and I place it over here, you'll notice that now the ostrich's conditions are in fact met. So I can place one of these scoring tokens onto here and now I'll know that I have three points earned right away, and I'll be able to score that at the end of the game. The alligator, the Nile crocodile rather, wants to be touching a red, which it is, and at least three blue habitats. So on another turn, if I place this over here, or if I place it anywhere touching the existing size of the water habitat, including my starting tile, now the crocodile will score as well. There's different types of tiles that will score gates, for example, want to have a tile on each of these locations where the dots or where the little squares are pointing. Uh, and then the gates also have these white lines, meaning that I cannot place them in such a way where they would abut against an existing tile. Or if I build it like this, I can no longer expand tiles out to these sides of it. Those are no longer legal placements. Camps are similar, wherein they will score for having tiles touching all those different sides. However, you can't place a camp next to a camp. And then there's also these watchtowers, which are going, to, are going to score for different ways. For example, one here is going to score for every uh, flower and animal tile that is scoring, that is qualified for scoring at the end of the game, 
Each of those will give it one point in an infinite line that direction. Or maybe, for all of the adjacent spaces, a touching that watchtower. So you'll go through and you'll, at, uh, as you score things, place these tiles out onto them. At the end of the game, you're going to go through this nice marker here, scoring those gold tiles, these majorities, at the end of each round. And then at the end of the game, score up all of your animals. Flowers are one point apiece. Score your watchtowers, score points for your tourists. These are the tiles like this that will score you one point for every different habitat of green that you have. Each habitat is non-touching. So for example, this is one green habitat, and that is one green habitat. You would score two points from tourists. Gates are these ones here that you'll score for completing those tiles next to it. And then camps the same way, and whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. Many times we talk about tactical versus strategy in games, and that matters because there's okay. the whole what are you planning to do at the end of the game and what can you do now? Strategy being long term, I have all these plans, tactical being every single turn I have to rethink what I'm doing. Okay, I see what you mean. In Habitat's tactical reigns supreme, especially when you're playing with multiple players. Because you're driving that Jeep around, you can you be like, I would way. like that tile, but it may not be there by the time I get there. Mm -hmm. And Yes, you can be like, if I drive this direction, I'll take a tile, and then when I'm done with that, I can take that tile. And you can do that occasionally, and I've done that before, but I rarely am thinking about more than one tile ahead because of the chaotic nature of the game. It's usually which of these one to three tiles, usually two to, two to three tiles, is best for me to take now. And then when you take that, where am I going to put that in my zoo? So I have two choices, but I don't think they're particularly deep choices. But it doesn't bother me in this game because this game is that, that, that the heaviness or the lightness of the game works. I, th I think so. That's what I like about it is that it, it's very quick to the table. It's very light. Um, but there's still those good decisions turn by turn. And sure, you have to kind of fly by the seat of your pants as you're making those choices. Um, but, but I think that that's fun. You want to look a little bit ahead for those end goals. You want to say like, hey, I want to build kind of diagonally in my part because that's going to be a... a scoring mechanism at some point or I want to build wide or I want to have stuff close to gates like you you have that in your mind but then you have to make those little decisions so basically I'm agreeing with you yeah I, I think it's it's fun just you have forward left or right your decision space is fairly limited uh, it's not like hey I can drive straight across the tile or you know keep moving until I bump into something and so it keeps the turns quick which I think is very yes. fitting for this mm -hmm. game because you have three choices and if someone is, uh, has their Jeep next to you, you have two choices. You should be able to make it quick. But you also have to, uh, then, once you have it, then it's where do you put it in your thing. Which is a little Carcassonne. Yeah. Actually, you compared it to Alhambra, which I think is almost more accurate, with, yeah. especially with the gates, gates and stuff. gates, yeah, the little edges. Yeah. I love that part of the puzzle. I really do. And there are, so, there are those frustrating moments, though, where you see the tile that you want, two spaces away, but you're like, ah, oh, I have to lay this other one first, and I wish they were in the backwards order. If I could get the first, or if I could get the second one first, I could put it down and then put the first one on top of it. So there's, there's those moments of frustration of like, it's not coming out in the order I want, but I enjoy that puzzle of how can I get the most animals to score around each other. But I'd argue that I also really like the moment of satisfaction when you finish an animal. You're like, yeah. Yeah. And I put this tile down and finish. Or if you, if you somehow can put a tile down and it finishes two animals. You're oh, like, yeah. You're like, ah, ha, ha, ha. I don't know. It's just, I, there's something about completing things. Yes. Games, more games need to allow you to complete stuff in game. It just feels good to it, me. It feels good. You put that ribbon thing on there and you say, I'm scoring this more. In the case of if you have the, uh, in my opinion, very silly, over the top upgraded things, the, you find the matching animal and you put it on there. Yes. Yeah, it I has think, a cool factor. I think it's those little it. hits of endorphin throughout the game that you're like, yeah, I did something. In fact, I remember being like kind of annoyed um, when I was playing it last with Chris because I was like, oh, he took my stuff, my Jeep's in the way. Like I was a little frustrated. And then I realized that his park was not as cool as my park. And so even though I felt frustrated, the I'm not necessarily realizing how good I'm doing versus someone else or vice versa. So I could be feeling really good about myself, and then someone could be doing it even better. So it's, I don't know, it's interesting. There's not, there's not a lot of those moments where I know how well the other person's doing. I am very happy, though, in this game to, for me, building the park, 
completing the objectives makes me feel better than that end game stuff. And I know the end game stuff there, and it does balance out the game, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever those goals are, or I'm sorry, they're not even end game. They're oh, each at the round. end of the round. But I'm just trying to get my lion the habit that it needs, and. You know, normally in games, I kind of switch around my different strategies. Oh, this one, I'll try this. I just always try to complete my animals because that gives me the most satisfaction. I, I would argue, and I haven't played this enough to definitively tell, but it seems like really your points are going to come mostly from animals. It's not like it can be like, I'm going to go big flower this time. <laughs> uh, well, that's true, but a flower but, is a guaranteed point, and near the end of the game, also, it matters more. No, do you, you go to but, a zoo for flowers or do you go to a zoo for animals? You don't know what I eat. I go for the animals. But you but, eat? Go for the animals. So the uh, he's eating animals is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Clearly, not not every food place at a zoo is vegetarian. Got so, it. Anyway, um, my point being, those objectives though, the end of round objectives, I think are a little bit of a red herring because if you because you're playing this majorities game, if you're really investing a lot into that and saying like I'll do a few less animals to really get those like four points there, you might as well have put that much effort into scoring two or three four-point animals. Uh, you know, I mean, and that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I think animals are gonna be a little bit more of your money maker, and that those, those objectives are okay to kind of good. But the animals are great, both in terms of fun and strategy. This is one of the few times I'm gonna say this. I think that the game, I would prefer to play this with more players than fewer. I don't know unless about five, because it gets congested with all those Jeeps driving around. But with two players, the end of round scoring stuff is majorities. And it's all or nothing. It, it is an all or nothing type of thing. And I would prefer to play with at least three, probably. Maybe even, I think four would be kind of a I sweet spot. I think I kind of agree with you there. Yeah. So it, it's funny because a lot of aspects of this game, I think, oh, fewer players is probably better and quicker and stuff. But I like majorities to feel more, uh, to feel more tension amongst multiple people rather than just like, am I going to get more uh, diagonal? columns than Wendy? I didn't. Darn, we tied, we got nothing. Especially because in a two-player game, there are two objectives that score every round. So you're like, if I get one, the other person gets one, cool, we're even. Yeah, put all this effort into three points apiece. Yeah. Oops. Well, for me, I'm ending up here at a 7.5. This is a pleasant, is an overused word sometimes, but this is kind of bad. It's, it's a, it's a, not necessarily a filler, it's a little, slightly longer than a filler, but it's close. It's like a super filler. I just get to play this. It's a great opening for a game night. It's easy to play. It's really easy to teach. You get something every turn, period. You're going to get a tile. Now, that tile may not work out for you, but at the least, it will help you make another tile better. And then the, the end game scoring and stuff, it just plays very smoothly. I like the board for the scoring a lot. Um, that has all the different features on it. I think that works well. So yeah, and, and the production value, I like a lot too. So thumbs up for me. Nice. I'm also going to give it a 7.5. Um, I really enjoy the puzzle of how do I fit these animals that all have different requirements together. I think that that's a lot of fun. All the extra parts of the game I think are fine, um, but I also appreciate that it's a quick setup, it's a quick play, um, it's just quick to the table. So I think that it's one of those that maybe my score would go up if I played it more as a, as a kind of a a, hey, I want to play something quick tonight. So if this were in my personal collection, I could see maybe that score going up, but for now where it's at, it's a 7.5. Now everyone's going to say this is collusion. <laughs> but I was also thinking going into this, I'm going to give this a 7.5, because as fun as it is, I agree with everything said. Quick playing, fast turns, endorphin rush, you know, completing animals mid-game, completing those little objectives and all that stuff, it feels great. I think that some of the objective tiles, though, are weirded very strangely, or worded very strangely. They are worded very weirdly. Yeah. Well, they're actually better <laughs> worded than the original one, but yes. Really? I could see that, but okay. sometimes it is, you know, sometimes you're sitting there, everyone kind of looking around going like, what does that mean? Count the longest spaces from a gate or entrance, lowest wins. Okay, wait, wait, so it's fewest spaces. No, 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 it's most spaces. Count most, but it's fewest is best. Some of those are a little bit confusing uh, and, and in board game tables does a good job, or sorry, all play, I, I will get on that, all play does a good job with the rule books for the most part, but I wouldn't have minded a, an extra leaflet that says, here's clarifications on these particular scoring tiles. I agree, I couldn't, they could have used okay. that. Yeah, but overall, very pleasant, really fun, great artwork, if it hasn't been said yet. Oh. 
It really looks like it. Yeah, great production. It looks awesome on the table. So 7.5. I'm definitely recommending this one. I do have one question, Tom. So we have the Kickstarter upgrade little animal meeples that you can place out. Mm. And there's a whole lot of them. And so I kind of throw any animal on whatever space because I don't want to find the specific ones. I want to find a specific one. But what was in the base game? Little ribbons. Little, little ribbons. ribbons. Put okay. So. And so they are, those were all generic the same? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, I would probably do that first. Personally, I have another question. Are you trying to make super filler a thing again? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, that was a that was a what thing of the early odds. It was a filler, filler super filler. I I'm Tom Basil. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. Let's bring super fillers back. <laughs>